Hello, friends. Welcome to the Aspen Daily Update from the Aspen Daily News. My name is Oliver Sharp. Very excited to be joined today by a very busy man, Joshua Vance, Pickton County epidemiologist. How are you today? Fine. How are you, Oliver? Doing well. Thank you for being here. Uh, let's start with the news that was uh, broken last night uh, about a change in our COVID-19 level or going from yellow to orange. Uh, can you tell us what that means and why that happened? Yeah, so our levels, uh, mainly the incidence rates and the number of cases that we've identified in the county, uh, among county residents over a, a period of a week, uh, reached uh, above the threshold uh, that the state allows for us to remain in the yellow level. Um, so we um, were advised by the state that we will need to move into that orange level because our uh, the number of cases that we uh, have seen over the, the last week um, has increased and, and gone beyond that threshold um, needed for us to remain in yellow level. And so how does that affect how uh, businesses are operating, how individuals are operating? Uh, what does that mean for uh, the county? So some capacity, uh, will be restricted to 25% um, in certain businesses. Um, organizations that are in our five-star program will, will have certain protections um, if they were uh, applied and uh, have remained in that program. Um, but otherwise, uh, capacity limits do, um, do uh, take a hold um, as well as uh, you know uh, several other um, changes that, that are made when a, a county goes to a more restrictive level. Um, and they can all be found on the CDPHE's website um, there's, there's a bunch of different uh, nuances um, for, for moving into a more restrictive level. And do you have any insight into why we saw that sharp increase in instant re instance rates over the last uh, week? What's causing that? Yeah, we've seen an increase in mobility in Pekin County. Um, if you look at our, our trends uh, about uh, looking at total movement of individuals, not just um, people visiting here from um, uh, you know, other counties or states, um, but we're also just seeing increased mobility among um, individuals that live in the Valley too. Uh, we know that when we see an increased amount of mobility and, and movement between individuals, um, that tends to lead to an increase in cases about a week later. And that's exactly what we saw here. We saw an increased mobility and we saw an increase in cases. So there's definitely a connection with spring rake, um, but I think there's also just a connection with, um, you know, individuals just wanting to be outdoors. We've had some good weather recently as well. Um, and so I think, you know, people, people gather, they, they move around a little bit more and we see an increase in cases due to that. And I think there's a misconception that, you know, if, if you're hanging out outdoors um, and, and you're um, spending time together that you may not um, be able to expose one another, but we know that, that we, we've definitely seen um, transmission occur from individuals, you know, spending time together, eating lunch in close settings together. Um, and so we know that all of those factors have combined to um, lead to an increase, increased incidence rate the other thing I'll add um, is that we have seen an increase in the number of variants um, in our county, which I know we'll, we'll discuss in a second. Um, but that, uh, with a more transmissible, uh, with more transmissible variants, we know that we'll see an increase uh, in our incidence rate as well. Yeah, and let's get right into those variants. Uh, what are we seeing here locally with this um, more transmittable or more infectious uh, variant, the B117? Uh, can you tell about that? Uh, have we are we seeing that here locally and how is that going to affect uh us as we try to contain the disease sure so just to explain exactly what what these variants are um so essentially you know all um any single variant that someone has been infected with um is considered a variant so you have the original strain uh, of the coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 um, and then any variation from that is called a variant um, so most individuals were exposed to a variant. Um, there, from variants, there are three different classifications. You have a variant of interest, a variant of concern, and then you have variants of high consequence. Um, and so right now, what we're tracking here in Pickens County are variants of interest and variants of concern. The CDC and the World Health Organization have not identified any variants of high consequence yet around the world. Um, however, variants of interest and variants, variants of concern um, have both been found to one, be more transmissible, and two, there is a, a, a very high likelihood that there is a significant reduction in your body's ability to uh, fight off those infections, even if you have protection. Um, so even if you've previously been exposed or you have uh, been vaccinated, there is an increased risk for those individuals who are exposed to these variants. 
Um, so they're they're very concerning um, because um, you know even individuals that have already been again like I said previously um, infected with COVID or have been vaccinated there is that risk that uh, reinfection or a, a new infection could occur from these variants. Um, in terms of numbers, we have had uh, 12 variants confirmed in Picking County. Uh, four of those have been the B117, which is the variant that was first discovered in the United Kingdom. Uh, we've had seven B1427s. That is the variant that was first discovered in California. And then we've had one B1526, and that's the variant that was first discovered in New York. Um, so we, we've had uh, sort of a mixture of those three, um, but we do have 33 uh, specimens that we were notified of um, that are pending sequencing, but are suspected of a variant. Um, They're most likely suspected of the B117, the uh, variant first identified in the United Kingdom, um, but we're still waiting on full sequencing of those results. And Josh, what's your recommendation? What, I mean, what should we do? What should our uh, government officials, what should individuals do? I mean, everybody's got COVID fatigue. Everybody wants this to be over, but it's certainly far from over. We're very much still in the thick of it. What do we do to make this end uh, as quickly as possible? Yeah, it's a good question, Oliver. And, you know, I get it. We're, we're all fatigued as well at the public health department. Um, I know the community is fatigued. Um, you know, in order for us to get through this, we, we have to continue to hunker down. I know, I know the news and um, you know other sources are, are really you know fighting and shooting for uh, us to to get through this. And and you know we're on the the way down, and things are going to be better by summer, and you know we can start relaxing things. We still need to be extremely vigilant. Um, you know, our, Picking County still has the uh, one of the highest incidence rates in the state. We might be number one as of today again. Um, we, we have a lot of infection uh, circulating in Picking County, and uh, our, our rates uh, in this county are among the highest in the in the in the country. Um, so we're still seeing a, a, a lot of transmission of COVID here in our community, um, and we need to continue to do the things that we've discussed um, for for a year now. Even though even though I know it's exhausting and tiring, which includes wearing masks, social distancing, and washing our hands. All those things remain extremely important. Um, you know, you, it, I, I hate for people to go an entire year being safe and, and protecting themselves and then get to this point where, you know, things are loosening and, um, you know, you, you start to kind of relax how you're responding and then you get infected. Um, you know, it, we're, we're close. The vaccines have been shown to be extremely effective at our previously circulating strains of, of COVID um, and are still very effective against these new variants, um, it, it, although to a you know, slightly uh, lesser extent. Um, but we have to continue to, to do what we've, what we've been doing, um, continue to hunker down, continue to abide by all those non-pharmaceutical interventions that we've discussed, um, and, and just try to get through this together as a community. Please, please, please remain vigilant as Josh is saying, a lot of infection still around and we're not through this yet. Uh, Josh, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for all of your hard work throughout this last year. Really appreciate your time. Great. Thank you all. Thanks to all of you for joining us here on the Aspen Daily Update. You can find more at aspendailynews.com and you can see us across the social media networks. We'll see you next time.